Good evening, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Tecton Zoo and thank you so much for watching. Today we are raising money for Kango Wildlife Ranch as part of Kangathon 2021. We're going to be building the biggest habitat I've ever built. And what is that in the background? That is the new Cheetah Conservation Centre. Before we get started, I'm going to show you why we're raising this money. I think it's the greatest honour for me to work with the people I work with every day. We work as a family, we work as a team. We work with passion and we work with love. If we weren't here to look after them anymore, then, you know, it's a scary question as well. What's, where are they going to go? Who's going to look after them? So. And this virus has devastated us. So Kango Wildlife Ranch was closed for a whole year due to lockdown. The lockdown's over in South Africa where they are. It's been particularly bad. Um, and with no visitors, obviously they can't support their animals as they as they should. Um, so that's why a load of creators have come together to raise funds for them. It's all led by Polsley, who's, uh, whose videos I'm sure you've seen. Uh, and there's a load of us making videos and streams this weekend in order to raise money. All the links on how to donate are in the description below. Obviously I wouldn't ask you to donate something that I haven't donated to myself. Uh, so I have done. It's a very, very worthy cause and I'm sure if you're a fan of Planet Zoo, uh, and if you're not, then I'm not sure why you're watching this. Maybe you're lost. I would highly recommend donating if you are able to. So on to today's build. Um, I mentioned this is gonna be the biggest habitat I've ever built. I think it's 3000 square meters. You can see here, these are just the fences that I've laid out. But they are fairly sizable. There's two reasons why it's so big. A, I want the animals to have a lot of room and B, it's gonna incorporate a conservation center into the build. So the conservation center is, uh, the entrance to it's on the path, but then the back of the building is all one-way glass that lets you see right into the habitat and that actually forms the habitat barrier. So the Kango Wildlife Ranch, as you've seen in that video, run a Cheetah Preservation Foundation, which is a not-for-profit group that participates in cheetah breeding programs which is vital for the genetic diversity of the cheetah. So in honor of that, I've decided to build a cheetah habitat for the zoo. Now cheetahs or, or any big cats really were not in my plans for the zoo. With it being a small city zoo and wanting it to be fairly realistic and focusing on animal welfare, I've ma mainly selected smaller species for this zoo. Um, now the cheetahs, I guess they are the smallest of the, the big cats, as they're called, so they do fit in and they've got 3,000 meters to play with here, so they should be they should be pretty happy with that. I made a nice long enclosure, so there's lots of room for them to run about. The inspiration for the exterior of this habitat is taken from a zoo in Denmark called Repark Safari, which has a really, really good cheetah enclosure and they've got this amazing enrichment system which I've replicated here well I say I've replicated that I've replicated it as much as Planet Zoo will allow me um, so essentially they have a wheel which which spins it's attached to a, like a generator and a battery pack and there's a wire that runs all the way around the enclosure and then attached to that wire is a piece of string with a bundle of string at the end sort of like a cat toy that you'd use at home if you have cats slightly larger considering the, the size of the cheetahs and um, the the keepers are able to essentially send the, the little bundle of straw flying around the enclosure at cheetah speed and the cheetahs chase after it I'd highly recommend checking out on YouTube you can see that in some of their videos on there so later on I build a replica of the the machine that they use uh, as closely as I can in uh, in Planet Zoo anyway, which isn't particularly close. Um, but yeah, sadly there's no sort of flying around the uh, enclosure with it for obvious reasons. I wanted to make some custom fences as well. So you can see here that I've done my own anti-climb barriers because I'm not a big fan of the ones in the game. And then this is a standoff barrier that's going to prevent people from being able to put their fingers through the bars and get them uh, nipped off by a cheetah, which is never ideal. Um, one thing I should probably mention, and this may come as a shock, so I hope you're sitting down, but today's build is not going to be made out of white concrete. 
I know it's a shock, I know you might need some time to adjust to this drastic change, <laughs> but um, I wanted to make a big conservation centre to go with the cheetah habitat to tie it in. So it's a conservation centre for cheetahs and other South African animals that Kango Wildlife Ranch would or, or may have. And I'm basing it on a building called the Lemvig Climatorium in Denmark, which is just an amazing uh, structure. It's really beautiful and um, it's, I guess, postmodernist is the, is the, uh, the term that you would use for it. It's very different from anything else in Tecton. Um, as you'll know if you've seen earlier episodes, most of the buildings in the zoo I designed myself. There's a few that are taken from Tecton's designs and this is very different but I thought it'd be really cool to have something in the zoo that maybe wasn't built out of white concrete like everything else. And the concept for this is that this area of the zoo is a new area so the uh, the grand plaza in the forest and jungle and desert that surround it and um, whatever's going to go next to the jungle when i think of that that is the original zoo the original size of the zoo it would have been pretty small by modern standards um, this is a new area of the zoo that was designed later um, so it's not going to stick exactly to the white concrete but it's still going to be very modernist in design and we're still going to be concentrating on the flowing lines so you can see here the building's actually black and yeah i know that's crazy compared to everything else but that provides a very nice contrast and the flowing lines that are so important to the design of this zoo are still very much there um, but they're going to be added on to the front of it in a second so the building itself is essentially a rectangle although the top floor is displaced from the lower floor which gives it a really interesting shape and then the lines rather than being in the building themselves are in these um, metal poles and this sweeping flowing piece of wood uh, or many pieces of wood actually I think this is the most piece heavy thing I've ever built <laughs> um, that is um, gonna come in in a bit uh, and it was when I saw it it was that that made me think that I wanted to get this building into the zoo because the there's a giant sweeping wood panel effect on the front of the building and it really brought to mind the cheetah. So I thought it'd be perfect to have as the conservation center for the cheetahs in the zoo. It's all sort of custom made from single wood planks. So my PC does kind of tank when I'm, uh, <laughs> when I'm trying to build anything else in the building. As soon as the camera gets anywhere near the front piece that I'm putting together at the moment, then my PC is, uh, is not a happy bunny. But um, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I sort of lost confidence on it halfway through because it looks so different to the rest of the zoo. Uh, but I asked a couple of people who know um, their, their architecture in their building when it was about half done. And they said, yeah, that still, that still fits in with the, the rest of the zoo. Um, so thanks to JP and Weiser for, uh, for backing me up on this. And um, now it's finished and I can see it in context. I am really happy with it. If you are able to donate to Kango Wildlife Fund, uh, I've got a couple of extra little uh, little bits for anyone who donates. If you let me know that you've donated in the comments to this video and either let me know your name or edit your donation to your YouTube name so that I can see it, then I've got some games from some lovely developers for both PC and Xbox to give away. And I will also add your name to the conservation center there's a special wall in there for donators and anyone who's helped Kango Wildlife Ranch and I will add your name to that and you will be uh, immortalized <laughs> in um, Tecton Zoo forever if you're able to, please help. Uh, if not, if you just subscribe to their YouTube channel, they've got some amazing footage of their cheetahs and some of their other animals on there. They've just got monetized so they will still earn money uh, just from you watching their videos, etc. Any help that you can give guys would be greatly appreciated. So all the metal poles are individually placed so that they form some flowing lines going up and down the front of the building. And then there's some wood paneling that is put in in the middle, which I'm doing here. Um, the wood paneling, it doesn't just curve up and down. It actually goes in and out on the, the Z axis as well. Uh, but this is, this is probably the longest build I've ever done. It, it doesn't even look that complex when it's finished because <laughs> the, the building itself is mainly a rectangle but it's the, um, the, the separate architectural designs on the front of it that really took the time. This is what, what I did, so it's the planks of wood, I forget the exact name of the piece, 
Each one is individually colored, so you get a nice orangey effect that changes as the, as the structure rises up. And it's all about just these little pieces, placing them down, putting them into exactly the right spot. You can see how it goes back on the Z-axis here. And then as it gets towards the top, it will come forward on the Z-axis that fills the, uh, the front of the building on the Y-axis. Uh, then I just copy it on the X-axis and um, it's done. I've never used the word axis so much in my life. So a quick correction to the sign here and then we are onto the interior of the building. I've only built three interiors, I think, and they were all in London Zoo 1985, so I copied them all. Um, this is the first time I've actually tried to design one myself. As you can see, white concrete is back on the menu, which is good. Uh, I wanted to bring some of the Tekton style back into the inside of the building. So you'll see some more of the, the curves and the white concrete coming up. I did some research into conservation centers and what they look like, and I found a couple of really nice ones, both over in the Emirates and um, decided to use some of their ideas. So one of them in particular had a really nice centerpiece. So I decided to recreate that using these curved wooden pieces, which I've never actually used before. I didn't realize there were thinner ones than this one that I'm using here. So I went back and edited that in when I discovered them later. But it's almost like a, a man-made tree kind of effect with information screens in it, which I've used the exhibit information screens in for. And put some custom graphics in there um, and in order to use the exhibit screens and actually have the information screen show up you need to have an exhibit nearby uh, so the building has an exhibit in it <laughs> which is uh, purely for um, for that reason really I'd actually look through what Kango Wildlife Ranch have by way of reptiles insects etc uh, and the only one that they had that we have in game is the green iguana uh, and it wouldn't really make any sense to put that in a conservation building because they are one of the few animals in the game that are actually pretty common so I found another African animal instead which is quite rare which is the Goliath frog so I put that in in a bit purely so that the screens that I'm about to put in here actually have something to put on them so you can then replace that with the custom graphics that I've done I started off building it using the African kiln upside down because I loved how it looked I was really impressed with this uh, until I hit play and then <laughs> smoke started billowing out of the middle of this centerpiece and I realized that, that was not the best idea so uh, I changed this out for um, one of the plant pots and it looks pretty decent I think I prefer the look of this kiln it's a bit more unique but I didn't really want uh, a giant fire in the middle of the conservation center so I had to change it you can see all the way around the building in the back the windows they're all one-way glass so this entire building sits inside the habitat uh, it forms the, the barrier for part of the habitat so the, the point being that the guests when they're in the conservation center can get a really good view of the cheetahs without looking through a fence uh, and it sort of gives a reason to go into the conservation center I sort of feel like a big conservation center is one of the last places you'd actually visit in a zoo be like the insect house always one of the least popular attractions so I wanted a reason for guests to actually come in here I made some custom lights as well with these African masks which I am um, which I like just a mirrored mask and then put the state giant stadium lights in it which are the most underwhelming lights in the game <laughs> they're enormous and then you turn them on and it's like a an energy saving light bulb but um, it fitted nicely I like the look of it and then this is where the Goliath frog is going to go. So just putting the exhibit in there. And then again, there'll be no path to it from the outside. It won't be visible at all from the outside of the building. So the guests will need to come into the building. And then I'll just put paths all the way under the wooden floor. I was going to grid it, but then apart from all the problems the game has with gridded paths, I wanted the guests to go where I wanted them to go rather than wherever they fancied going. So I've used normal paths to direct them to the various viewing windows and to the frogs and the information boards so that the guests in the game will be sort of stood in the in the right place if you like and then i wanted some information stations as well that you get in places like this so i put these um picnic benches in and then in the middle of each one of them i put in a education speaker 
some of which are for the cheetahs and some of which are for the goliath frog and then just a little pillow underneath it to make it look like it's part of the table they're dead simple it's only it's only three of the in-game pieces but it sort of matches pretty closely to the buildings that i was looking at over in the emirates now this is the most important part of the inside of the building this is the donations wall make a donation let me know in the comments and your name will be on this wall forever next up is the shelter for the cheetahs so i've repurposed the staff building for this because i wanted something that was really low profile that would sit in the back of the enclosure that the cheetahs would be able to get into but which wouldn't dominate the view from inside the conservation center i've put a maternity area in here as well i spent quite a bit of time looking into the husbandry requirements for cheetahs and um, if you want them to breed then they really need a separate area for the female to give birth they have a little a nesting area it's called never realized that uh, cheetahs make nests but there you go um, so i put that in here as far as i'm aware you wouldn't actually keep a male and a female cheetah together um, they don't really get on but um, you bring the male in purely for the purposes of mating and then remove him so the enclosure originally was split in two but i just didn't like the the visual of having the the fence across the middle of it i thought it would look better without it and it would be more interesting to have them together and i figured that this is planet zoo not a real zoo so we could do that now this was fun i'm going to try and turn this giant pile of junk into the driver for the cheetah enrichment system that i mentioned at the start of the video I'm always amazed when I see things in Planet Zoo where people have made something that isn't in the game. It's not very well doing you know, buildings and habitats and things like that, like I do, but when you can create something that doesn't even exist, it always amazes me how they use you know, font pieces and the smallest items in the game to make things. Uh, so I thought I'd have a go. Um, I'll leave it up to you to see how, uh, or to judge how well I did in that regard. Uh, but I really wanted to build this uh, system. Uh, it's only very superficially similar to the one in the uh, reef park that I was talking about at the start. But it, um, this would be the, the driver that would send the enrichment item flying around the enclosure. So I've got, uh, I needed a wheel, so I've got the wheelbarrow. That was the one that worked best. Um, a few air conditioning units the African Jeep but I really enjoyed doing this I might try and do things like this more often let me know in the comments whether you think it works or whether I should never ever try and do anything like this again and um, we'll see how we get on I've christened it the Jankmaster 4000 now it's on to the final stage of the build uh, decorating the inside of the habitat of the cheetahs so three of the things that are considered desirable for cheetah habitats are a raised viewing point so they can display their natural behavior of scanning the horizon for prey an outdoor shelter of some kind because they like to have like a little den to I don't know chill out in feel safe in and have their cubs in and then permanent access to some form of water source so I'm building here a something that takes care of the first two of those. So it's a raised platform that they can walk over and survey the uh, massive uh, habitat that they've got. And then underneath it is a shelter that they can chill out in. It's only very small, but obviously they've got a massive shelter in the building that they can also use. And then I'll add in some standing water later as well. And then just the usual terrain work to tie the rocks into the ground. I like this little platform, it's, it's semi-modelled on a picture of a real zoo somewhere. Uh, I forget which zoo it was, it wasn't the, the re-park, it was um, something I found on Zoo Chat. But it just looked really cool the way they could walk up it, and it looks very good. You'll see it in the cinematics at the end when they walk over it. It's, uh, it's pretty visually pleasing. And then obviously since the Africa pack has come out, spamming this grass everywhere. Well, carefully placing, not spamming. <laughs> the spamming comes in a minute. <laughs> the one thing I don't like about it is the shadows. Uh, I think maybe because I filmed this in late afternoon, but the shadows on this grass are pretty extreme. You can see here it looks really, really dark. I mean, grass doesn't really cast a shadow, not one that you can see without getting really up close to it. So that's uh, it looks good at midday. But it's, uh, it's a bit of a shame in the afternoon, the way it looks. Um, be cool if they could tone that tone that down a bit all that's left to do now is put in the pond 
make a few little adjustments to the front of the building and that is everything done. Thank you so much for watching. If you have, thank you even more for donating. It'll make such a difference to the Kango Wildlife Ranch. I will be back next week with a, another video. Enjoy the end cinematics. Bye.